the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola very warm welcome to the VR show the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail today we are going to continue the theme of interviews but today's episode is slightly going to be different in the sense it is not a one on one interview but the interview was a part of the la liga media session organized by la liga india the session included famous players and uh, legends of the game you can say one of the players involved was luis garcia who played for barcelona atletico madrid Liverpool to name a few and the other was Frederic Canote who played for the likes of Tottenham and Sevilla to name a few clubs and both of them played in La Liga and you can call them as La Liga legends and also in the session were present various journalists from different organizations and the conversations held in the session was quite you know uh, meaningful and it had a lot of insights so i personally enjoyed the session and i hope you all also enjoy it and on that note i would like to first thank la liga india for calling me for the session and i hope you all enjoy the session as a listeners which we are going to play and i also hope la liga india keeps arranging such sessions and keeps calling me over so on that note i'll not waste much of your time and we'll begin the session for today uh hello everyone this is um, some of you already know me i'm jose antonio gachaza i am la liga uh, managing director in india and uh, well we are been talking to many of you uh, quite a few times during these uh, last 2 uh, 3 months uh, where we try to bring the excitement to of football back to the fans in this very difficult uh, situation and uh, today we have uh, two uh, la liga legends two la liga ambassadors with us frederic uh, canute and luis garcia which I'll, I'll introduce a little bit further in one minute well we are finishing a, a long season the most uh, for us the most difficult season and i think for any sports manager in the world the most difficult season we ever faced because all the unexpected uh, a difference of other competitions of other even other top football leagues we were we are almost there there's still two weeks uh, two matches uh, remaining for finishing i mean what was maybe unthinkable uh, four months ago in march now we are there we're finishing and uh, i hope i hope this return of sports to some something as abnormal as the new normal helps the people people to uh, help us all to recover uh, our lives little by little i was just to refresh three four highlights of what we have done in uh, in india this uh, this season that start what it seems some ages ago but it was just 10 months ago in september uh, 19 uh, 2019 we started uh, really with uh, something new for us and really exciting as having two new uh, indian sponsors as such as they are bkt tires a global our new la liga global sponsor and uh, dream 11 uh, the fantasy league operator in india the number one fantasy league operator in india as our local sponsor regional sponsor for india also we uh, established ties uh, with uh, india's sports religion which is cricket uh, bringing in the great great rohit sharma as our brand ambassador for the country and uh, then uh, it came the unexpected then can covid everything comes uh, to a stop and we try to uh, keep working uh, with our, in our schools project where all the schools projects in india or uh, uh, normal schools were closed we keep uh, teaching uh, indian boys to play football through um, uh, uh, the project we call la liga football school at home which is uh, online training uh, we organized uh, several events. We brought uh, 
we brought you several legends. Uh, Frederick was before with the Song of You. Luis was before with, with Song of You. We did the La Liga Santander Fest on which we raised uh, 1.2 million for the acquisition of medical equipment. So we tried to keep uh, the, the light aflame. So um, now we have, uh, it's, we, are just, we were just talking with Luis. It's, it's quite an interesting uh, situation. Uh, almost four years ago, we organized the first two public viewings of El Clasico in India. That's where a success beyond La Liga's uh, uh, expectations. And funnily, funnily enough, on those two events, Luis Garcia was with us in Delhi and Frederick was with us in Mumbai. So, uh, before uh, uh, going, how was that experience, uh, both Luis Frederick? Um, uh, well, actually, uh, first of all, I would like to say hi to uh, everybody. I hope they are well. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back with uh, all of you. Uh, I, I see a few, and I recognize a few faces. Uh, I've been many times in India, so uh, saying that um, it's true that um, after in that classic viewing party that we we had in, in New Delhi was quite amazing. I mean, uh, because of course I was expecting uh, the passion and, and, and to enjoy a party with all, all, the, all the people who was coming. But when I realized that uh, they opened the doors and everybody started coming in, it was around 12,000 people watching the same game, enjoying the, the, the El Clasico uh, party with La Liga and it's quite amazing. I mean, for me, it was a, a, a fantastic experience. I was coming uh, as a, a La Liga ambassador. Uh, I've been lucky to travel around the world in the past four or five years after my I retired from football. But I, w I wasn't expecting at all to, to see all the people enjoying a, a football game. And it was quite uh, exciting. And well, I'm looking forward to be back there, hopefully very soon. Frederick? Yeah, no, same, same, same for me. Uh, it, it was an amazing uh, experience. And uh, obviously, football is global now. So we know it's quite popular all over the world. But I didn't expect India to love football that much. Obviously, it was a fantastic game. Already four years, time flies. This is crazy. It seems like yesterday, but uh, it was it was a fantastic uh, experience for me. I could see that uh, football, uh, people are really passionate about football in India. Uh, I think it was very big there, but I be careful. Football is catching up. Catching. Uh, when we talk of Frederick Canute, I want to remember you, you, we are talking of one of the biggest legends of one of the biggest clubs, which is Sevilla FC, member of one of the best Sevilla squads ever, the most successful, 20, uh, 209 appearances and 89 goals for Sevilla. But when we are talking of Luis, uh, maybe you score a, li a little less goals, but you play for more teams. So you, uh, Luis uh, played in La Liga, both first and second divisions, 190 games, but also let's not forget a highly successful uh, adventure in the in England, and scoring a total of 38 goals. But Luis uh, wear the shirts of some of the most exciting clubs of La Liga. We we're talking of Real Valladolid, Tenerife, Racing Santander, uh, FC Barcelona, and of course Atletico de Madrid. So, uh, Luis, for, uh, I'll start for you, for example. It's been uh, a quite exciting uh, season. There's still two matches to go. And all those, although things seem to be kind of clear, they are not. We still don't know who will be the champion. We still don't know uh, who will be uh, all the four teams of uh, playing Champions League. We don't know which teams will be in uh, Europa League. Uh, even relegation is still at stake. Uh, how do you um, how do you feel that it's uh, it's it's been this season, this crazy season? Uh, exactly, uh, this crazy season. I think it's it's been fantastic. To be honest, it's true that uh, after the outbreak and when uh, La Liga stopped, we were um, all looking to do that battle between Real Madrid and Barcelona. Of course, they were uh, far away from the rest of them, so we knew that one of those they will be fighting for it. But uh, it's there at the moment. Uh, it's amazing how competitive this La Liga is. Uh, you can see that everything is open. 
the relegation. We know that the Spaniel is already in La Liga Smart Bank, but above all of them, we got three teams fighting for it. In the Europa League, there's so many teams involved to try to get in those Europa League positions. It's all open. We just found out one day ago that the Atletico Madrid will be in Champions League next year. But we don't know who's going to be the winner. Tonight is a massive game with Real Madrid in both. Uh, to yeah. see if C <coughs> final <coughs> will get uh, like will a trophy. Get, uh, like trophy. Long, my like, God, they've been waiting for two, three for years to finally get that trophy. So, unbelievable <coughs> how competitive how this league has, has become. And, uh, and actually, actually, I can't be more excited, excited to see what happens in, in the next, next, next uh, week and because only going to be deciding this weekend day. Frederick, the return of competition has been quite a challenge. Uh, it drives a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attention. Uh, also, both of you have been uh, talking uh, with uh, with journalists of, of all over the world. Uh, uh, how do you live this return of La Liga? What really uh, called your attention? Um, uh, I, I think there's a lot of echo. I don't know if it's for all of you guys. Oh. Uh, maybe if you can um, cut yeah. your yes. mic. So whoever is whoever not talking, talking can go on mute, please. Okay. I I repeat. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Yeah. Okay, good. My question is: uh, You uh, when the with the return of the competition, both Luis and you have been uh, talking, uh, not traveling because nobody is traveling now, but talking to journalists of uh, half the world. No, you, I know that you've been talking to journalists in America, Asia, Africa, Europe, all over. So, how do you leave this return of La Liga and what called your attention of this return of La Liga? You want, you want to start, Luis? No, uh, Frederick, it's for you. you, for you. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think the, the, the thing that caught my attention, first of all, is uh, having like this new experience. Uh, we, didn't we didn't know exactly what to expect, even if we promoted the fact that uh, people, the fans, could, could still watch the games at home and so on. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, technology uh, and the advance, the technological advance that uh, uh, La Liga has worked on, I think it proved very, very successful. Uh, I mean, myself at home with my kids, we watch all the games and uh, we obviously we feel that there is no fans because nothing can replace the, the, the fans. But the experience for viewers at home is still fantastic. Uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed all the games. Uh, uh, with with uh, all very realistic uh, approach in terms of how to uh, imitate uh, uh, the, the the fans, whether we, whether it is by uh, um, the, the the vision or by the sound. So so I think it's 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 been uh, quite good, and um, I, I wanted I hoped uh, before it started that there were not too many injuries as well, because after a long long stop like this. There is a, a high risk, but also bringing like the five substitute has, uh, uh, um, I would say, reduced the risk of having too many injuries. And the spectacle, the, the show that uh, the players have put on have been absolutely fantastic, uh, despite all these things and despite also the heat the, that has come back in Spain. So, so we, I'm pretty much uh, satisfied with, with, with everything. Pues Antonio, estás en mute. Sí, 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 no me puedo, me, me han puesto en mute y no puedo <laughs> a, a ahora. ¿Ahora me oís? ¿Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we were talking about how hard is being the, the conclusion of La Liga, how hard is being relegation, but I want to ask you, uh, because uh, you, I, I won't say you were lucky too, but uh, you play in second division, which is probably right now one of the most competitive leagues in Europe. I mean, for uh, for Indian journalists to know, at any given time, you can be uh, six points away from the uh, promotion uh, uh, positions, but six uh, away from relegation. So it's incredibly crazy. 
By the way, I want to tell that all La Liga Smart Bank matches in India can be uh, seen for free through a La Liga uh, YouTube page. So, uh, can you tell me about this? How uh, second division? Let's not forget teams that they're playing there: Zaragoza, Deportivo, uh, really top houses. Cadiz that has been already promoted, one of the most beloved clubs in in, in Spain. How do you see uh, uh, second division? How you will recommend? To Indian fans to watch or why uh, to follow La Liga Smart Bank, La Liga Second Division? Well, actually, La Liga Smart Bank has become almost uh, as La Liga uh, as competitive because uh, you, ca you can see the table and you will recognize many teams, many teams that have been involved in the past 10 years in, in La Liga. We, we've seen uh, Deportivo, we've seen uh, Zaragoza, we've seen Tenerife, teams that have been involved in La Liga for many, many years. So now La Liga Smart Bank. You, we can call it as the second division, as it's been called for many years, but it's not anymore. Uh, I mean, um, most of the teams, if you see now, uh, uh, Cadiz just uh, become first team of La Liga from yesterday. So that's something fantastic for, for football and for La Liga because uh, it's one of the best clubs in Spain. Uh, if we talk um, about crowd-wise, I mean, the, the crowd from Cadiz is one of the best ones in Spain. Uh, how they cheer, how they follow. Uh, they've been putting inside the, the, the stadium 15,000 when uh, Cadiz was in second division B, not even in the smart bank, talking about the second division B. So how that's how they follow. But if you see the top of the table, it's just amazing. Uh, from the third to the 12th position in, in the table, they can all be involved on the playoffs. And from, from that 12th uh, down to the bottom, there is another uh, 12 teams that they can be involved in, in relegation positions if they don't wake up and, and get ready to, to, to win games. So that's how exciting is uh, Smart Bank. And well, to see teams like Zaragoza, like Girona, that has been in first division no long ago, Tenerife, um, uh, Huesca, uh, is, it was uh, two years ago uh, playing in La Liga, is so exciting. And well, uh, looking forward to see which one is the team who follows uh, uh, Cadiz. Uh, to promotion to La Liga, but um, for me, Tenerife, that is one of my teams that I play in second division. We, we promote back then in 2001, I think it was, it was a long time ago, we promoted to La Liga, so I hope they can grab that spot to play playoffs and, and see if they can manage to, to promote as well. So all the best to all of them, but it, it's actually uh, good, uh, worth watch. You've been muted again. You. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Frederick, uh, a question for both of you, and then I'll open the ground to the journalists because they are bored of me. Uh, which team do you follow? I think uh, for, for making it more difficult to Frederick, beyond Sevilla. But Luis, <laughs> you have many, many, many to follow. So, Frederick. Uh, I'm a football lover anyway, so I, I follow many, many uh, teams. I like to watch football. Even when uh, Sevilla is not playing, I, wa I watch football. I watch La Liga and, um, and, and to, to follow, it's going to be difficult to say. Apart from Sevilla, that I follow very closely because I'm a man of, of one club. Uh, I'm a one club man in, in Spain. So it's difficult for me to choose another club that I would particularly uh, follow. But uh, yeah, I follow all of them and obviously I enjoy watching uh, uh, all the ones that are on the top, but not only uh, because yesterday, for example, I've, I've watched Mallorca against Sevilla uh, and, and uh, I think all the teams are playing uh, quite at the high level. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for the three bottom ones, they will have to uh, they will have to go down. But uh, I've been enjoying even the bottom teams. Um, that's what I could answer. Well, Antonio, for me it's a bit different because uh, you know I was born in Barcelona. I grew up following Barcelona clubs, so um, I I kind of. Uh, crossing my fingers on these late uh, late days because of Barcelona <laughs> trying to grab the spot of uh, Real Madrid. Quite difficult because Real Madrid looks very, very strong and very solid. So we'll see tonight what happens. But uh, yeah, always like, uh, like uh, Fred, I try to follow the teams that I, that I play uh, with, uh, like Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, even Tenerife in second division. 
Uh, Valladolid it was a very important club for me when, when I grew up because uh, it was my first team in first division after leaving the academy of Barcelona. So I had an amazing experience there. I, I, I grew up and got, grabbed a lot of experience from very uh, older players and, and they gave me so much. So I tried to follow all of them and uh, well, uh, like Fred, I watched so much football and, and yes, always finger, uh, crossing my fingers to try to see Atletico fighting with the top teams. Uh, but for example, uh, talking about the Sevilla or Fred, uh, it was it, it's amazing to see this team how for the past six, eight years is becoming uh, the third or the fourth fighting with Atletico Madrid for the third position and fighting even with the top two Real Madrid and Barcelona to try to take away some trophies from him. So I love to see that the, 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 the teams that are improving in the past three, four years, like La Sociedad, like uh, Getafe, how Getafe has been able to grab a, almost a Champions League position and Europa position with the battle that they got. So how they have adapted, how Eibar had, had adapted a, 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 a city of 30,000 people staying in, in La Liga for these years and, and, and adapting to the new situation, how they have been improving the, 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 the quality of, uh, of, of the players and how they have adapted to different situations where they didn't have enough money to buy big players. So, I think it, we all enjoy the football if you get deep down a little bit more. And of course, we all like to watch the Classico and the Derbies and see who is going to win the trophy. But for the ones we have passion for football, we love this. It's also the other teams, you know, the games. Well, thank you. Well, Sachin, uh, up to you. Go, take, take control. Thank you. Thank you, Jose, for the input that you have got from us, uh, from the uh, legends earlier on. Uh, Luis, uh, to get into more specific about the Barcelona's performance and the and the push and the fact that they are second on the table right now, a lot of Barcelona legends uh, like uh, Gerard Pique and their president also has clearly said that the VAR controversies has uh, played an important role in the title race. Uh, what do you have to say on that, Luis? That that is true at the end uh, VAR, but uh, the, the thing is if it has if VAR has been right or has been wrong. I mean the decision that the VAR has done, I think they have been all good. Maybe you can have a couple that maybe you will have doubt or not. But at the end, we have to understand um, the VAR is, is there to try to help uh, the referees. And of course, uh, we all love controversy. And he, uh, before it was in uh, VAR. Before it wasn't uh, gold light technology, and, and the people will talk. Now the AI is here, and people is talking anyway. So at the end, it's about uh, understanding. That's the beauty of football. That uh, for some people, a uh, challenge will see they will see it as a red card, and from some other, they won't see the red card. That's the, the again. It's the beautiful football. I understand that Gerard Pique and and, and the president of the club uh, complain if the things are not going on he, on their way. And uh, I understand in the other side that they say, but it's the way it is. VAR is, is, is a good tool if we know how to use it. So um, the important thing is if VAR is helping, and I think it's helping. So hopefully we can manage to clear some situation. And at the end, everybody or almost everybody, it won't be 100 percent always the, the people who, uh, agrees with uh, VAR. But to do make uh, things worse, Griezmann is injured now. Uh, do you think uh, the coach will have a difficult time rearranging the attack party in the set at the forward? It's only two more games. Uh, actually, uh, Griezmann, of course, is an important player. Um, he, uh, we all know how, how good he can be, even though that he struggled a little bit in the past few months uh, trying to adapt to the new situation of Barcelona. But I think Barcelona squad is good enough to play the, the last two games. Uh, with 100% uh, confidence on the players, they are going to be involved. Uh, I mean, Ansu Fati has done great. Um, uh, uh, how is, I now I forgot the other one. Braguard has been great when he's been on the field. So I think he is uh, plenty of players. Uh, Ricky Puig, a young player, has been very good when he's been on the field. So I think they are players enough to 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 put on on the field and not look back and see and think, oh my God, uh, Griezmann is not going to be involved. So. I think the squad is good enough to to play the next two games and win both of them. Uh, Frederick, your take uh, your take on the VAR controversies and also on Griezmann's injury. What do you have to add? No, just uh, on the VAR. I mean, 
I've said uh, in, in the past that I'm not 100% convinced, but not because of the VAR when I think about it, but just about uh, how uh, at the end of the day it will always come to human interpretation. So, so we, we cannot expect uh, VAR to solve all the problems. Uh, so so that, that, that's what I mean. But as long as, as it's, it's, it's here, it's meant to help. It's meant to help the, the, the referees and that that's doing uh, its job but we can't expect not having one single error because it's uh, it, it comes down to human interpretation uh, anyway and uh, and yeah regarding um, uh, um, uh, Griezmann's injury I think it's okay to be honest when we're talking about Barcelona it's such a a big and quality squad that even if one player is 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 missing it's not a huge issue to be honest uh except maybe if it's messy <laughs> but even even then i'm not sure because the the talent is there and whether it is uh, madrid and barcelona they can they can they can afford uh, um uh, i mean missing one or two players sometimes and for sure they're going to they're going to deliver So right after this La Liga, we have Champions League coming up. Do you think uh, the players have enough in the tank to preserve their energy to cope with the Champions League fight as well? With Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, and Real Madrid, and Real Madrid all are looking for the glory. Yes, I guess uh, that when 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 you when you play in these kind of uh, teams, you know where you're, where where you're gonna spend. You know. Uh, how your competition? I, I understand that people see, think that uh, it's true that they haven't had a, a proper um, precision. So we have to understand that in the first few games uh, they struggle a little bit with the rhythm, but now they are full 100% fitness, and uh, it's, it's about time. I mean, there is only maybe two, three more weeks where they have to be, push themselves, but they are not, they, they are used to it. I mean, when this kind of player with the with the professional music they go they know how to push themselves they know how when they have to control and wait on and when they have uh, to go uh, full of it so i am sure that with the rotation that the manager have been doing with the with all the recovery that they can have at this moment that is a lot i think they they will arrive uh, in form to to this kind of games It's about maybe four five six more games uh, at least at last so um I, I know i understand that they know they know from the beginning and they've been doing it for many years some of these players maybe they have a couple of weeks a, a year of, of rest uh, once they finish the, the season they go national teams and when they don't finish national team they go back to the teams so they are very professional and they are very well uh take care of and, and i'm sure that they will show, make a, a good effort to of course get another trophy Frederick, your take on the fatigue that can creep in the players? Yeah, obviously the the, the fatigue is an is an important uh, fatigue is an important aspect. Uh, I mean, it's it's unpre unprecedented time uh, to 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 I mean to compete at that level so often. Uh, so so, but but I think it's been uh, addressed the 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 right way, uh, and uh, we can see that now. The players are really well looked after, like uh, Luis said, and uh, they're professional. They're prepared to 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 play every uh, three four uh, days. So I think it's gonna be it's gonna be okay, and they're gonna arrive uh, in full fitness for to play those important games. And also, without forgetting that uh, the implementation of the five substitution has helped a lot as well. So I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be okay, and we will see um, um, countries and leagues like France. If it's at the end, it's gonna be with hindsight, we will be able to uh, to judge if it has been an advantage or not uh, to stop the league. So uh, only uh, time will tell. We'll see. Uh, so, uh, Frederick, to you. The next question is to you itself. Uh, how do you rank? Sevilla's performance for this season. They are at number four right now. Do you consider it as something they have done better from the previous seasons? Or if not, then what should they do to be a uh, challenger to the uh, title? 
uh, I, I'm really happy about the way they played. Uh, I'm really happy about the quality and the depth of the squad. Uh, I think uh, really quality players. They, they, they don't, I would say, um, I, uh, they, they don't uh, look up to any of uh, teams. I think they, they just play any team as they want to win, even if they play with the uh, uh, against Barcelona or Madrid, they they really like a tough team to beat. Uh, for the past, I would say, 15 years, Seville has been a very very com very competitive uh, team and has always caused problem uh, to the the big two above them. And uh, with the, I would say it's a similar team as Atletico de Madrid, very very competitive that has always been there and uh, always want to be a contender. Uh, to uh, disturb the hegemony uh, of, of Barcelona and Madrid, but obviously it will um, um, it will take a little bit more to reach their level. So hopefully in the coming years uh, we can see uh, a, a, an even more competitive league with other teams uh, getting the title. Uh, in terms of Seville, what they miss. To be honest, it's, it's a very, very balanced team. I like the work that Lopetegui has, has done with, with this team. Uh, very positive, very like he wants to be in control, have the pos possession and the control of the game. And uh, I would say maybe up front they needed maybe some someone that could score on a more regular basis uh, to, 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 to help them be also a bit more consistent. But apart from that, I think in the, if they carry on like this, hopefully in the coming years they can uh, compete for the title. Uh, Luis, uh, something about your former club, Atletico Madrid. Six wins and three draws. Massive improvement, especially after when they have come uh, from the break. Unprecedented yeah, break. Yeah, definitely. definitely. At the end, um, Everybody was expecting this, who is going to uh, get an advantage from the break and who is going to pro differently in La Liga. And we mentioned before, we were talking about Barcelona and Real Madrid. Real Madrid started better uh, after the resume of La Liga. Barcelona struggled in a couple of, uh, of games. And for Atletico, it's been totally different. I mean, we've seen a totally different Atletico, a lot more accurate at front, scoring goals, uh, a lot more balance. They went back to the basics of uh, Simeone, having a fantastic a team very well organized, very compact, difficult to, to play against. And with those fast and quick transitions and uh, at the end, it's about, uh, it's about the goal. Football is about the goal and Atletico went back to, to scoring. If we remember just before the, the, the break, Atletico was struggling so much to scoring goals. Uh, after Griezmann left the, the club, uh, there were a lot of goals who had to be implemented and uh, with Morata injured, uh, Diego Costa injured for a while. So it, it wasn't easy to, to get back all those goals. So at the end, uh, Correa has been doing well, uh, bringing back uh, Carrasco. I think it was also a fantastic ad. So, um, well, uh, I, I, I'm enjoying watching Atletico again. I'm, I'm enjoying watching the team uh, playing and well, finally getting the third position that it was uh, a, a must for Atletico to, to be in Champions League next year, to uh, getting the same aspiration for the 2021 La Liga. And with four points uh, lead for Real Madrid, do you think they are the clear favourites to pick the trophy? And which player has impressed you most since the restart of the league? From Real Madrid perspective, I think, yes, I think uh, uh, they are... Uh, up front, four points uh, there is a lot, only three left. Um, I, I won't see Real Madrid missing many. Uh, there's been a couple of games where they have struggled, but they they got into that momentum where even not playing well, they get in their results. And that's what the most important is. Uh, arriving to the end of, the, of this uh, competition or a strange competition, but uh, getting results. Uh, and about uh, who's been impressing, I think Valverde has been one of the best players uh, so far. Um, Rodrigo has been also quite impressive in the past few games. Every time that he's been on the field, he, he shows us uh, um, something different. But the key player, I think, for Real Madrid this season has been Sergio Ramos and, and Benzema. They've been absolutely amazing, both of them. Uh, from the back, scoring goals and being the, 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 the leader of the team. And at the front, Karim Benzema with the goals and with his movement. He's been the one who's been dropping to link when the, the Real Madrid had so much problem to bring the ball to the front. He's been the one 
going down, getting the ball and bringing it forward. So I think for me, there's been the two. Of course, we won't forget uh, uh, the goalie, uh, Coutoua, that has been also amazing and saving a lot of points for Real Madrid. And how difficult is, uh, is to keep as a player to motivate yourself when there is no crowd in the stadium, the energy that you can take from the crowd, if it is not there, how difficult it is to motivate yourself? Fred, go ahead. You go. You can go ahead, please. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, it's it's always more difficult to to uh, to be motivated. But at the end of the day, I think every professional players can motivate himself, uh, even at training. <laughs> that's that's what we are supposed to do, and that's what they're supposed to do: be motivated all the time. And obviously, it's uh, the, the the when the support of your fans is not there. Or is not directly there because it's still there. They're still supporting you, but a little bit by afar. But uh, uh, when they are not there, it's always a bit more difficult, and you miss them. Uh, and for sure, the, the 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 players are missing them so much right now. But I think when we see the performance that have been given so far, uh, I, I think they are still very much motivated because of the challenges all the teams have to uh, um, have to face but uh, also because they are professional players and uh, they did it very well. So it's a very positive point. Definitely. I totally agree with, with Fred. I, I want to add that it's, it, it was an adaptation as well for them. I think every time there is something, some new rule is an adaptation for the players. But if you think that uh, with the safety protocol La Liga has implemented to, for the safety of everybody, the players have to adapt to that new situation, arrive from the bus, getting into the dressing room far away from your teammates. They cannot sit down together in the, in the, on the bench together. They have to be uh, separated. They, there's been many different uh, situations. So the crowd has been one more. So it's, it's, uh, we have to give a lot of credit to, to all the players. So they, they have adapted very well to go on the field and, and, and perform the same way that we've been seeing, him. We've been seeing them um, for the past few months. Uh, is something remarkable, we have to say. It. Uh, it's not easy to get into the field without crowd, but if you go back, all the things that they have done until arrive to that is also remarkable. So, as far as Champions League is concerned, how, how, what are the chances you look for Real Madrid and Barcelona fairly enough to pick up the trophy? I didn't, I didn't understand the question. So, for Real Madrid and Barcelona to go into the Champions League, uh, what are uh, what are the chances that they will pick up the trophy? And uh, how do you rate their teams right now with the current standing and how they are going into the Champions League without any break? And wh what is your take on the Champions League game that is going to come up with the uh, Real with the La Liga teams involved in that? Well, I think I, I think everybody's got a chance now at the moment. I mean, apart from uh, Barcelona, I think it's still one game to play and Real Madrid the same. If they can go through, I think everybody's got the same the same chances because uh, um, the way the Champions League is being built uh, in a in now there is going to be one game. Uh, everybody's got chances. That's the beauty of, of the Champions League competition uh, that they they are not as long as La Liga where you can enjoy a lot more games. But uh, those are small different uh, situations. Those two games where you can kick out if you don't play well everybody's got a chance and at this stage uh, all the teams are in the same position uh, apart from what fred said before uh, some of the the, the the leagues that have finished earlier uh, we don't know how they're going to approach this kind of level of intensity because when you're used to playing your competition you arrive to champs league and you were talking about being tired but actually uh, play friendly games and don't being able to keep that rhythm of competition for a while also is not going to be helpful when you have to play this kind of uh, situation uh, to play in one game everything that you've been uh, fighting for the whole season or everything that you are going to fight for the next couple of weeks so we'll see everybody's got a chance because uh, that's the way that this competition is built and the quality of the players they are involved at this stage is is fantastic so uh, Real Madrid's got chances Atletico uh, and Barcelona we will see also, one more question on Champions League. The CA's ruling overturning Manchester City's Champions League ban. Uh, will it not uh, embolden teams like Real Madrid to take advantage of the COVID situation and spend a lot of money on players for relatively low transfer fees? 
uh, actually, we are talking in, uh, as ambassador of La Liga and getting involved in other competition and in other uh, stuff is kind of, of weird. So I understand there is a rule uh, people will be happy, some of them we won't be happy. Uh, but we are not going to get involved in this kind of, uh, of uh, comments because uh, actually they doesn't add anything to uh, La Liga as a, as, a, as a group. Okay. Uh, one on the lighter note, do you think Messi will finish his career playing at Barcelona or there is a chance that he will move out of Barcelona as well? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Hopefully yes. Hopefully yes. I would love to. I would love to see Messi many years in 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 Barcelona and in La Liga, of course, uh, because I enjoy watching him play. Uh, even though that sometimes people will think they struggle, like everybody, that is not happy, like everybody when he loses. Uh, I hope that he stays. He's his own. Uh, all the supporters love him. Uh, not only Barcelona, around the world, I think the most of the people enjoy him uh, and uh, watch him play. So hopefully he can stay many years. Uh, Mr. D Mr. Dhiman from uh, Hindustan Times, can you go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, am I audible? Yes, Mr. Dhiman, you are. Okay, uh, this is a question to uh, Hi, Louis. Uh, I'm Dhiman. I work for the Hindustan Times. Uh, this is a question to you as as someone who's played for Barcelona and Liverpool, if I may add. Now, do you see Barcelona as a team that is in transition now? And how long do you think it takes for a team to make that transition? You know, one generation of players go away and the other generation comes in. So, Barcelona now have a number of players who are in their 30s. So, do you see that as a team in transition uh, now? And how successfully can they make that transition? Well, uh, yeah, I think that at the end, like every team, uh, you get in, in a moment of transition. Uh, and it can be from one year to three years to five years. And we've seen it from the past 20 years. Uh, I remember when I signed for Barcelona back in 2003, it was a moment of transition. They, they stay like five years, four years without winning a trophy. Two years after, um, they won everything. Uh, so, um, yeah, it could be a moment of transition, but if you have a look to the squad of Barcelona, lo looks quite weird. I think they, they are trying to uh, move forward to uh, the new generation, Ricky Puig, Ansu Fati, the young, uh, players who are adding so much quality, so much talent, uh, they're going to learn from the experience of players they have surround. Um, they are signing more players, they are bringing youth to the, to the team that can learn from the players they are already there. Uh, so yeah, it could be a transition, but uh, it's true that if this year they win Champions League or they win La Liga, it won't be a transition year. So we can talk about transition the day that they stop winning a trophy anything at all so it can happen uh, it's something that i think that the club know and that there is something understandable after what they have been winning uh, i think they've been they won eight of from the last 10 la liga trophies so i think it's, it's important to understand that it can happen but again i don't think it will take long to this kind of transition for the quality and the talent that they got in the squad thank you uh, Vivek from the Times of India, please go ahead and ask your question. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah. you are Vivek. Okay, uh, my question is to both Lewis and Frederick. Uh, under Zidane this season, Real have uh, adopted a certain amount of pragmatism in the way that they play, uh, and have just been about. Uh, they've been getting the job done. Uh, in earlier years, I mean, their fans have traditionally wanted a more flamboyant and attacking style of football. Uh, do you think this is the way they're going to play under Zidane in his second stint, especially without Ronald, Ronaldo up front? And do you think, uh, even if they are successful this way, do you think it will be acceptable to the club president and the fans? Go ahead, Fred. Uh, I mean, uh, Zizou is Zizou. <laughs> Whatever he touches, it turns into gold. So don't worry about that. <laughs> no, I'm... I'm, I'm Quite, uh, I mean, I haven't seen all the games, obviously, and um, the Real Madrid fans are, I mean, one of the most difficult fans to please, to be honest, and uh, obviously they've been used to the one of the best football, if not the best football in Europe, uh, in many occasions. So obviously they're going to demand 
uh, a high level and uh, and very good uh, style of football. But at the end of the day, there, there is one thing they're going to demand is uh, results. And the man that is in charge right now gives them results. So I don't think they're going to care that much of uh, the way they play. And we've seen that Zizou has been able to change uh, uh, the, the, the system and the formation in a very successful way. And he's been very pragmatic. We know that Zizou loves the beautiful football, but he's also clever enough to be very pragmatic in the way he plays football. So, so we were talking about the, the, the likes of Benzema, for example, that uh, he gives him, uh, it seems that he gives him an absolute uh, freedom to move in between the lines and to drop on the sides and so on to, to, to really create uh, uh, the, 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 the opportunities and also finish them. So, so we can see uh, um, uh, many, many um, differences that he brings to the to the game and to the to the formations week in week out that proved successful so far. So I don't think they have much to complain right now. So yeah, I I agree totally with Fred. At the end, uh, if we remember a little bit from Sine uh, Insi that comes from uh, because he's been very fast and very quick, but uh, he's been managing for five six years, if we can recall, and passed from uh, second division uh, in Spain, uh, coaching the academy of Real Madrid, second team of Real Madrid, to the first team, won three Champions League, and uh, in during th th those moments with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, as a key star. Everybody was talking about if he has to change, he kept playing with that 4-3-3 system, trying to keep the three at the front with Babe and Zema and Cristiano Ronaldo. Everybody was complaining he had to change because the system didn't work, but at the end, there were results. I think we have to also give credit to Zinedine Zidane because they, now he's got a lot more experience. Now you can see that he can play 3-4-3 three, three, or he can play 4-4-2 four, four, and he's been changing 4-2-3-1. He's been changing, he's been adapting the, the plays that he had, he's been rotating in a fantastic way, giving more opportunity to young players like uh, Valverde, uh, Asensio, Vázquez, that have been very important for Real Madrid in the past two, three years, and suddenly giving importance to jobbing in certain ways. Suddenly, um, uh, Rodrigo, became a key player on the right side or Vinicius in some other games. So at the end, he realized how important is rotation, how important is for this team to, to, to change. It doesn't matter if some days they don't play well, but at the end, what Fred uh, said before, results. Real Madrid uh, supporters, they won't care at all if they win La Liga trophy because they've been missing this trophy for so long. So at the moment, if tonight they don't play well, but they win 1-0, they'll be more than happy and celebrated. So at the end, it's about results. Next year, of course, you will expect, as all the supporters of a big club, that they play well if they win. But at this stage, it's about getting results. And Zinedine Zidane is done again, but it looks impossible in the beginning of the season when there was a lot of comments about this team, if they weren't ready, Barcelona were, was going far away from them. And now look at it. It's four, uh, almost well, it's one point, but it will be probably four points tonight, and they will win again another trophy. Subhashish Koirala from uh, the big the FM from Nepal. Please go ahead and ask your question. So hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, hello Luis. Hello Frederick. Hello Jose. How are you? Uh, so my question is for Luis. Okay, and uh, you know, like I'll talk about Atletico Madrid, where you have played a lot more than Barcelona, and people are generally asking about Barcelona. So uh, you know, like uh, Diego Simeone has a legendary status there, but. Atletico Madrid have after they finish after they won the champ uh, league, they have come out second, third, fourth. What is the realistic target for both Atletico and Diego Simeone going forward? Because Simeone maybe he can go to the likes of other teams and maybe probably win more. You know, like uh, and and even Atletico, you know, like although they are coming close, they are never uh, coming so close to win the, winning the league again. What do you think? What is your th opinion on it? Well, uh, actually, if you think about properly, I mean, uh, Simeone has built an amazing team that uh, we don't know what's going to happen when he leaves. Now let's go to the next step. Um, he has to pick a team, you mean, for winning. We've seen so many times players, uh, recently a player that I, we follow very much, as Coutinho, was in Liverpool. He wanted to leave uh, Liverpool to win trophy, and 
went back to to Barcelona. He has to leave Barcelona and go back to other team. And uh, Liverpool won the Champions League last year, won the Premier League this year, and Simeone is trying to do that with uh, with uh, Atletico. He wants to win La Liga. He wants again La Liga. He wants to win Champions League. He wants to win trophies with something that he built. Every single year is a challenge because he knows that in front of him he's got two and three teams to beat. Uh, big teams like Real Madrid or Barcelona, they are big, massive teams. And it's a challenge. And I think he loves that kind of challenges. And also, if he wants to leave where? To, find, to win a, 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 a trophy. Don't forget that to win a trophy, only one team wins a trophy. And uh, it's a league and one of the two uh, Euro, um, European trophies. So there is three teams that are going to win everything. So you have to pick a team in Europe who can win those trophies. That's difficult, trust me. To win La Liga, you are fighting against massive clubs like Real Madrid and Barcelona. And to win Champions League, you have to fight against everybody in the world because everybody wants, or everybody in Europe that wants to, uh, to win that trophy. So at the end, it's very difficult to say, okay, I'm going to leave Atletico Madrid to try to win a trophy somewhere else. Where? Because we've been seeing uh, Pep Guardiola struggling to win that massive competition. We've been seeing Paris Saint-Germain uh, struggling to win that kind of massive teams. And the players who go to those teams and the managers who go to those teams, they believe that they can win the trophy. And at the end, it's only one winner. So going back to Atletico Madrid, this year they got the chance again of winning the Champions League. And they got into Champions League next season. I'm sure that next season, because Atletico has been also in a transition moment, leaving, letting go players as Griezmann, as uh, Lucas, as um, uh, Gabi, players who have been Juanfran, massive key players for this team. And now they are coming new young ones like Joao Felix uh, or, or other young players who are getting involved. Now the challenge is next year getting back to try to win La Liga. We'll see what happens. I think they can do it. They can manage to build a stronger team and build a team who can win La Liga. But I don't think that Simeone is thinking, I'm going to try to find another place. If he wants to go to another place because he wants another challenge. But not thinking I'm going to try to go there to win because I think he's got more challenge, more chances to win a trophy in La Atletico than going somewhere else and had to build again what he's been building for the past 10 years. Thank you so much. Martin Joseph from New Indian Express, please go ahead. Martin, you are on mute. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, you audible? audible. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, guys, actually, I have two questions. Uh, one is for the both of you, Frederick and Louis, and the second is for uh, Louis specifically. Uh, now, the first question is, uh, if you look at the past uh, 10, 12 years or so, like, you know, the Barcelona and the Real Madrid have been the most dominant force in football, thanks to uh, Ronaldo and Messi. But uh, if you see, Ronaldo has uh, already left uh, Real Madrid and Messi is uh, well coming towards the end of his career. So, uh, we all thought that maybe Neymar is the next in line to be like the next best footballer in the world. So, do you think that uh, the dynamics is going to change after uh, uh, Messi and Ronaldo? And uh, do you think uh, maybe uh, Barcelona bringing uh, Neymar back? would be a good decision for them. How do you think these teams are going to kind of uh, sustain their dominance in European football like after these two, like, you know, uh, how, how, how do you see that playing out? And uh, my second question is to Louis. Uh, uh, I'm kind of giving it, giving it a little bit, but uh, this is about your old club, Liverpool. Uh, they actually won the Premier League title after 30 long years. So, you've been there uh, at the club and at that time, you know, Liverpool were playing well, but they were not really kind of winning the title. So, how do you think they made that, uh, how do you, how did they take a next, next step? Like, you know, what, what, what did they do right and uh, what do you have to say about this title prime band? What do you have to say about uh, how things are going to play out next season, whether it be again Liverpool and City? How is it? Um, okay. Uh, um, uh, regarding um, La, La, La Liga uh, first and the competition, uh, that uh, first of all we have to say that we've been privileged to witness and to uh, watch uh, uh, some of the and to play against also some of the the best uh, two players 
of the century, Messi and, uh, and Ronaldo. And uh, uh, La Liga has been uh, privileged to have them for so many years. But um, having said that, I think we'll have to see beyond that. And uh, La Liga is, is bigger than any particular player. And uh, uh, for sure, we will see many more young, talented players coming. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Neymar is going to come back or not, but I, I think um, it, it doesn't matter because some top players are going to play. Now, right now, we can see some very, very good players, 21 years old, 22 years old, that are very good. And in a few years, we're going to see if they can. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to replace someone like Messi. It's not about replacing someone because what we've witnessed was historical this competition between Ronaldo and Messi. We don't know if we're going to live exactly the same thing in the future, but for sure we're going to see a lot of big, big talents express themselves in, in La Liga in the, in, the, in the future. Because we can see right now a lot of young players that are very, very good and successful. So in the future, for sure, we we're going to see them uh, jump to the high stage in Europe and, and, and prove that uh, maybe they can deserve uh, Ballon d'Or uh, in the future after, after Messi. But Messi for now is still here. We, we shouldn't say, oh, he's too old or whatever, because what he's doing week in, week out is still amazing. Obviously, he will have to adjust a little bit his game. He's already done so. So he's, he's thinking a step ahead of everybody, while everybody is uh, thinking of, um, oh, he's too old and so on. He's already adjusted his game and he's very, very decisive in all the games he's playing. So I think we're still going to um, enjoy Messi for, for, for a few years. Okay, and you want me to answer to the question of uh, uh, Liverpool? Yeah, that'd be great. Yes, no, um, I, I guess um, I think we've been all waiting for so long. Um, in my time over there, we tried, but it was no chance. We couldn't even get closer to the top position, second, third. It was uh, very difficult against uh, the Arsenal or Chelsea back then. They were so strong, big squad. But I think in the moment uh, that um, Jurgen arrived to, to the club, it's been a, a massive change. I think he, he, he gave, he has given to the club a personality, a philosophy of uh, of playing football. He brought that that um, amazing way of playing, attacking football. We all enjoyed when he was uh, back in uh, in Dortmund. And uh, he said that when he arrived, he said to everybody, "Listen, don't don't ask me to give you trophies now because I'm building something." It was a moment we talked before a moment, moment of transition. Ask me in a couple of three years, and he started developing. I think. And we have to give a lot of credit to, to, to him because he built a, an amazing squad. Um, not only those players we, we all have in mind, Mane, Salah, Firmino, uh, Henderson, players who has gave so much to, to, the, to the team, scoring goals, creating chances. But the rest of them, the, the ones who have been involved as often, because what he has done is to give the belief, to give the credit to those who were standing on the bench waiting for their chance. And they have been key players in 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 a, in in, a, in a very important moments. We can we can recall those Origi, Wijnaldum, Shakiri in situation of Champions League or in Premier League where they they have been involved in in very special moments. So at the end, what what, what he built it was a squad, a very uh, big squad, deciding who to to sign in a perfect moment, who to sign, and uh, not just because uh, it was a big name. Not because he, 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 everybody was asking for players. He needed. He was picking players for the these spots that he was. He thought it was uh, the team was weaker. So those Alexander Nardo, they were there. Robertson's amazing two fullbacks that they come out from nowhere. Uh, no one was expecting to be such a, an, an important players for for Liverpool. So. I think uh, he, he has all the credit because he decided, I'm going to put this one here, this one here. Joe Gomez was playing on the right side. I want to put him here. Fabinho, that he was a player who people didn't know if he was going to adapt. He gave him the time to adapt to the Premier League and now he's a key player also for me in the center of the pitch. So at the end, we have to give a lot of credit to Jurgen Klopp and for all the fans who have been, they've been waiting and waiting for this team to explode. 
and finally get Champions League last year, Premier League this year, and from here on, it's going to be the, the team to beat uh, because um, uh, I don't see Liverpool going down for, for, for a chance. I mean, they are hungry. They are, there is a young team who are, is going to continue growing. Uh, they are already looking for all the players who can add something different to the club, like Minamino, Minamino uh, uh, giving the chance to rest uh, all the players in the midfield, like Ronaldo, like Anderson, or Lalana, or uh, well, Lalana probably will leave the club, but uh, players who can rest. And uh, Minamino is a key player, I think, for the for the future. He's a young player, so at the end, it's about that to continue adding stuff to this ma amazing machine. And I think Jurgen is 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 a key person for for that. And well, we'll see what will happen in the future because we don't have the the ball to to find it. But I think that is a bright future for for this team, and I'm sure that they will challenge in again for all the trophies next year. Well, I think uh, thank you. I think uh, this is all the time we had. Uh, and uh, let me finish. Uh, I want to say something. Uh, the great champion of uh, Premier League has been beaten by the third class of qualified in La Liga. I think that tells a story. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Luis, <laughs> Luis, Frederick, uh, thank you very much for being with us, and thank you all of you for um, for being with us. And uh, we'll. Uh, We'll keep bringing you opportunities of uh, questioning La Liga legends, uh, which uh, I know uh, interested you as journalists and also interest uh, La Liga football fans. So uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll be back uh, to you. Something, uh, Sachin, do you want to say anything? No. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. We we have limited time with our with our players also. Uh, they have comments. Uh, thank you for all your questions. I hope everything was answered. Uh, thank you so much. Luis, Freddy, gracias. Thank you, gracias. thank you very much, guys. Bye, guys. Be safe. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.